Hey everybody, welcome to the cord cutter. I'm the cord cutter. <laughs> Dave T. Dave. Dave. My name is Dave TV. Anyway, hi, I'm Dave. I'm the cord cutter. This is my uh, little TV set. This is my Roku down here. This is Sling TV, so I can get um, like 20 channels here. I don't know how many channels. It's a whole lot of channels. You know, there's uh, ESPN, ESPN2, AMC, TNT, uh, A&E. Uh, History, H2, TBS, IFC, El Rey, which I never watch, Maker, which I never watch, HGTV, Food, Travel, uh, Cartoon Network, ABC Family, Disney Channel, CNN, etc., etc., etc. All these channels for 20 bucks, okay? And it's interesting, I've been playing around with the Roku version of this, and I actually like it better. It's quite a bit more stable than the Windows version. I got it on the Windows computer here, too. The problem is the Windows version, which I can't load at the same time because you can only watch one at a time, but the Windows version here, um, it conks out constantly. It gives you a red error message at the top, you know, it's, it'll say something like error code 3, error code 2, and then dump you back out to the main screen. Uh, sometimes it works, but I find that, especially if I'm watching in prime time at times, like in the evenings, trying to watch uh, Mad Men or something, it's constantly it being interrupted and everything like that. And the other thing, I you know, occasionally, I guess because there's a lot of neighbors around here, there's some Wi-Fi congestion, and if there's any little gizmo in the Wi-Fi or any glitch in the Wi-Fi signal, I lose the, um, the sling. It'll just bip out. Whereas if I'm watching it on the Roku, it's very good. It feels like, honestly, like I'm watching television, okay? Really feels like I'm watching cable TV. It's good. It doesn't conk out. I can watch a whole show, whatever. So I put the Roku in here in the little TV lounge <laughs> so I can, I can watch it with no problem. So, so I have to say, Sling TV is a good service. I'm not happy with the Windows app. Even though they've updated it, it still is very glitchy. But on Roku, for some reason, it works wonderfully. So that's that. So anyhow, that's my uh, two month anniversary, two months on uh, on the uh, thing, and yeah, uh, on Sling TV. And the other nice thing about Sling TV is that um, there's quite there's at least a couple episodes of some major shows that you can watch on demand. Okay, so it took a while. It took a little while. So if you go to Sling, for example, and I'll do that here. Let's see, where am I here on the Roku? <sighs> uh, anyway, I like my Star Wars. Star, this put that on there. I didn't even do that. <laughs> yeah, these are my, these are my uh, Roku channels at the moment. Uh, yeah, you know, da, 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 watch PBS. Yeah, these are some cool channels. Some I never watch, but some I do. So you go to Sling. Okay. Da, 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 da. And this is how it loads. So you got Sling TV, Take Back TV, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, the Roku for some reason works so much better than the, um, than the Windows version. That's Windows 8.1. But anyhow, there it comes up. And then what you got to do, and you got to play with this, play with this, because it's not instinctive. Is that the word? It's not instinctive to figure all these, uh, buttons out and stuff. But you go to, you have to go to channel details, which is the up button, okay? So, and you got to do it from this bar menu, okay? So go to the channel details. Click the up button and wait. See if it works. Maybe it didn't. There we go. Then you go to this screen, okay? And then you can then choose. You can. Here's this current schedule, which is kind of, you know, dopey, I guess. Then you have to click the down arrow button to get down to the schedule. And then go to the available now. So click the down button again. Now, when you're on the available now, here's the on-demand menu, okay? This is on-demand. So you can watch two episodes of Better Call Saul, uh, Comic Book Men. Let's say I want to watch Mad Men. Go to Mad Men. There we are. We're on Mad Men. It says there's eight episodes from one season, okay? So then you click on the Mad Men. Click the OK button. And you wait. And you wait, and you wait. Anyway... There we go. And there's some, some of the episodes. There's episode, this is season seven, the new one, or season six and a half, whatever they want to call it. And there's the last couple episodes, and you can click on those and watch them. So anyway, you know, they're not all there, but, uh, you know, they, the last two episodes so far. And they come through just fine. But uh, you got to do this on the Roku. I don't know. It just doesn't work well on the computer. 
So anyway, there we are. There's our wonderful Sling TV. So again, if I'm watching on the Roku, at the Roku one there, figure out, you know, kind of the kind of confusing menu items. But I think it works. It's much more stable for some reason on the Roku than it is on the Windows 8 machine. So anyway, that's cool. And uh, so there. I oh, saw so an interesting article today in the um, Washington Post. Verizon slims down its bundles for television. So now Verizon is going to give people more options in terms of their packages. For example, one of the things that always was a giant glitch to me about uh, cable TV was the fact that even though you didn't watch ESPN, you had to have it in your package. And ESPN takes your cable rates way up, you know, because that's a very expensive channel. So if you're not a sports fan, you don't want ESPN, you have to buy this package that has ESPN in it. So at least Verizon is, you know, with their Fios system is doing something interesting by offering people a package without ESPN in it. So here's a $54 package you can get as 35 basic cable networks, including CNN, HGTV, AMC, Food Network, and all your local channels, but it doesn't include ESPN. And I think that's what's going to be happening, you know. And again, it's the same thing if you don't have kids. Why, if you don't have kids, why do you, you know, why do you have to get 10 different kitty networks if you don't like women's shows if you, you know if you're a guy and you don't like to watch lifetime and hgtv why do you have to get those i don't know so at least the cable industry is moving in a better direction moving toward um offering specific packages that don't have that, that at least gearing stuff to what people want so i think that's cool and sling tv does that and I think that's pretty cool. So anyhow, the other big news that came out yesterday <coughs> was that the um, a bunch of reports that the Department of Justice, I think Bloomberg was leading on this, that the Department of Justice is leaning against, leaning against um, uh, approving the uh, Comcast deal. Comcast, as you may well know, wants to buy Time Warner Cable, okay? And that would give... <sighs> <laughs> and the, oh dear, I'm getting the sun in my eyes here. Uh, sun, in, uh, sun coming through the Time Warner cable wants to buy, or Comcast wants to buy Time Warner cable, which would give Comcast, a, you know, and you know, their Comcast is already the largest cable company in the country, and they'd be even bigger. You know, Comcast I think is a tremendously inept company. Okay, I've dealt with Comcast for uh, more than a, way more than a decade, two decades at least here in Reston. They've all, you know, the company has always been inept, okay, but back years ago, they used to at least have a few good people working there. Um, the manager, maybe the head of the technical department, they were always good people. You'd occasionally run into a good person and could work with them, and they'd give you their phone number, and they'd work with you, and, you know, get rid of the problem, whatever. I mean, I had a problem once where my... My cable system, would, it would get snowy constantly. The picture would just gradually get snowy. Then it would suddenly pop and get clear. And it would do that for months and months and months on end. And you called them and they couldn't fix it. They just could not fix it. They couldn't isolate the problem. And, you know, finally we got a decent guy who was the engineer. And, and I believe his name is Bobby. And they finally found the problem and fixed it. And then I got Bobby's number. And then any time I had a problem, I'd call Bobby. Or you get a really good manager of the system. There was a couple of them. And you could deal with that. Well, they're all, all those good people are gone now. Well, you know, most of them. And, uh, you know, you just dealt with this horrendous bureaucracy and, in, 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 and continuing inept service. So, I don't know. So that's Comcast. <laughs> And I just wonder, you know, here's a Comcast that is, ex there's a company that has extremely poor customer service. They, you know, they have a dingy office. They charge all these fees for stupid things. You know, if you take your box back to the office, they charge you a fee for doing that, even though you're saving them a truck roll. Uh, just stupid stuff like that. All these stupid fees, and they keep raising their rates, and they talk about how they're in it for the customer service. You know, if Comcast, they, they want a monopoly. In, in this area, for example, Villa Ridge, you know, this my apartment here, I mean, I only have Comcast. That's it, you know, in terms of, um, in terms of broadband Internet. Now, you have Verizon does wire some of the neighborhoods around here, but they didn't wire this one. So, you know, you have basically, they have a monopoly situation and they just charge whatever they want. And then, you know, it's like their rates, you know, you can make deals with them, but sometimes they'll make a deal with you, sometimes they won't. You wonder, you know, if you walk in and you look a certain way, are they going to make a deal with you? Uh, you know, if you look a certain way, if you got a beard, maybe they say, oh, he's a hipster, we're not making a deal with him. 
So the whole company is just screwed up from top to bottom, and they want to get bigger. I mean, I think what would be better, instead of having a bigger Comcast that dominates everything, is um, you know more cable companies, more media companies, more internet companies competing with each other. That's what we need. So you know the news that the Department of Justice is leaning toward uh, disapproving this um, this takeover bid from Comcast and Time Warner, I think is a good thing. I think that um, you know Comcast, if anything, needs to be broken up into more companies so that they compete with each other and give us better service. A bigger Comcast is not a better thing for uh, anybody. All right, folks. There we go. Ah, uh, thanks for watching uh, Cord Cutter. <laughs> Just relaxing here, watching. Um, what am I watching here? Oh, I've got the uh, Seven on Seven. Remember that old movie, Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, oh, on a DVD, by the way. Anyway, thanks for watching um, Cord Cutter for the 18th of April, 2015. It's Record Store Day, by the way. Don't forget to go out to your local record store and buy a record, if there is one still out there. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Adios, amigos.